Are you still hyped about this game, or are you somewhat bored of it? I exist on a level where I'm able to be both at the same time. That's how much of a card game player I am. I think it's impossible to be a high-level card game player without exhibiting properties of both. This is just what being a pro entails. <laughs> glop. Yeah, it's Glop. My boy Glop. We, we're old school Gwent bros. I mean, I don't remember him, but he informed me that we knew each other, so we're bros. Hello! <laughs> what are you mulliganing for? Um, mostly early options. I should talk about my plays a little bit more. Just trying to get like the Elise uh, Crawling Sensation stuff. Uh, Neverglade Collector if I have like a maid hand. Against Kalista Elise, I'm not really too concerned about keeping Arachnoid Sentry in particular. I could have kept one if I had like a little bit more of a developed opener, like Hapless plus Elise or something like that. Like basically, the, the thing about the Mulligan is that the more... The better your like turn one, turn two plays are, the more you can keep like later things. Like if I have Elise Hapless, then I can keep Sentry and I can keep Collector. Stuff like that. Interesting. Good thing Elise puts the spider on the right side. Yeah, this attack looks fine. Nothing bad about this attack. He might have to trade off one just to boost the other. And I can deal with that 33 with Culling Strike if I need to. A Culling Strike plus Crawling Sensation looks pretty sweet this turn. So, he's forced to block on the right side. Usually, this deck will think about playing, like, Callista and stuff on these turns. I really don't like this Day Who Endure version. I also think Callista is kind of a bad card and overrated, and has been for a while. I can also try to flip my uh, Elise here. I think it is probably worth it to try to flip the Elise here. You're finally up to three crawling sensations. Listen, Hierophant, you're right about that one. <clears throat> I agree, man. My true beauty is beneath the skin. Oh yeah, more crawling sensations, baby! Let's go! So we have to watch out for Black Spear. Not too high odds of him having it. You might keep like double cluster early. 15, 20 percent. When I try to flip it next turn, the problem with trying to f so that's something that you can often do, but he's actually not going to play a lot of like one health units for me to get value out of feasting there. Which is kind of sad. Mostly, we don't actually want our board to really be trading down until later anyway. So a couple different things we can do here. Um, oh boy. I mean, killing striking this is decent. Can I just do this? Seems good. I don't know. I mean, I just want to literally just maximize the value out of my collector, and I care about literally nothing else. Like, what else could possibly matter? 6 out of 10 pasta? Oh, thank god. Thanks for the review. I won't have to read it. See, this is the thing about this, like, I love this sort of, like, review economy that we have now. I mean, it creates a lot of, like, terrible incentives and shit, but... As a consumer, I can just ignore everything that has, like, low reviews. It's great. Wee! So here's the thing. He can't collect her, because we have a 4-3 challenger. Like, we win. We're in a mirror where I get to collect her, and he can't. What the hell else could possibly matter? <laughs> like... <laughs> so we're going to enable Crawling Sensation this turn. Because we do want to threaten the Callista. So he'll play his Neverglade on offense. I mean, he has to have a Neverglade, right? Is it ever worth it for us to kill the Callista? Or is that trolly? Maybe we just on a super clog that board here and I'm just supposed to chill. I'm actually not 100% sure, I'll just pass. Interesting. Yeah, this looks pretty good. 
We'll use Fervor on this. We want to use the Fervor first, because there's a decent chance he's on File Feast. And we actually want to re-glimpse after the Vile Feast. Otherwise, we would have glimpsed first. But we'd rather have the glimpse go off than the Fervor. It's actually important. So we just use Fervor to basically bait out Vile Feast. Because we, we, we needed to draw in this position. And now that we're post-combat, we can go ahead and Crawling Sensation. And now, <clears throat> if he has the Collector, he might have to play it here now that he's killed our Elise. Potentially. It might be a little hard for him to have Collector here. But if he does, then it might be hard for him to play around our second Elise. Killing it right away. <laughs> I mean, am I just chilling? It's kind of better to just chill, right? I guess I can attack one of the Mysterates just to get it into Vile Feast range. Let me try that. <sighs> Looks good. So, hands, it's really important to remember that with cards, so every resource has diminishing returns, right? He's on a two card hand, which means that's a really small hand. The identity of a draw two is really, really powerful on a two card hand. It's basically a double up, right? So the thing is, like, if he had a five card hand, maybe I could let this go, but I cannot. I cannot let this go. So we'll have to do this. This will trigger his collector, but I mean, who cares? <clears throat> Why so many emotes today? It's just because it's Glop and I know him. I emote my friends a lot a lot more. So if he's got second collector, he might be forced to play it out here. We have to be thinking about what kind of hand range he's got here. Um, he's down to a one card hand. Hmm, how many chump blockers do we actually need? We might need to pre-spider. It's probably a little bit better to pre-spider. Usually it's just like an endure at this point. Sometimes it's like a random atrocity. But it, usually it's a card that just gets clogged out. Usually their last card is something that he doesn't have the upper- Ooh, he's pausing here though. What are you? What are you? Okay, and we'll just do this. Um, at this point, like, blocking out the Cursed Keeper is usually worth it, no big deal. I mean, we're not really taking any damage to this. Usually this is fine. I mean... Keeping our health pretty high is nice. His Endure can open attack. Open attacking Endure is pretty scary. I think I have to do this at this point. I think I need to basically... My objective right now is pretty straightforward. I need to keep my health high enough to, you know, be safe from his Endure, which is all over his range. It's kind of like the most likely thing he's playing here. <clears throat> and the important thing about this is just making sure that... Okay, so Butcher is his top deck, and then his other card is probably Endure. He'll play it here if it is. Interesting. And yeah, this, this kind of goes with that pause earlier. It's not Second Glimpse, it's not Vile Feast. No idea what it is. It still might be that Enter. It's not... Vengeance. Ledros? Does he call it Run Ledros? I don't think it's... I don't think he runs Ledros. Atrocity? Yeah, I mean, it, it could be Atrocity. 
Okay, so we got a glimpse off. That's really powerful for him. Like, this is kind of... He can't really win without drawing cards. So the fact that he top-decked a glimpse is really insane. That's, like, exactly what needed to happen for him. Um, does my Swain get to attack here? I mean, he will literally need to block my Swain. The more units he blocks... The more we're stunning, right? Fury is scary. Yeah, we're, we're playing into Fury, that's true. Fury off the top. Because he didn't have Fury before, but he could easily have it off the top. Okay. So we should be good here. There's no top deck that really wins him the game anymore. So it's a Caretaker. That makes sense. I was thinking it might be Caretaker. Like, Caretaker, he did have an opportunity to play, like, really, really early on. So we're just gonna go ahead and remind everyone. Remember when people cut this card? That was pretty funny. <coughs> okay. Seems good. And this th this last card in his hand now has a basically infinitely wide range. He drew it this turn, right? This The Caretaker was the card on the right that he's been holding this entire time. This card over here is just a random card. Could be anything, right? Six low. Eh, whatever. I guess I keep my sentries for offense. I guess we, we go in for the big fearsome, the the huge, huge fearsome play. So it's like, or I could open Glimpse, is that better? So he's got two cards completely random, 25 cards in his deck. You can't really go by reads in this situation. Instead, we're just going to go by, you know, the things that we're kind of like scared of, things that are a bit more likely than others. Um, he's running two Vile Feasts left. We really want to make- if, if we don't- if- if we get the Glimpse off, we basically can't lose. It's really, really important to kind of deny that from happening, so... It's fairly easy for them to be stuff like Vile Feast. <clears throat> Ruination. Could actually be a Ruination. Might not be able to double sentry because of that. Withering Whale. The deck shouldn't really be running Withering Whale in this meta, so it should be fine. If it is actually Ruination, though... And it actually could be, and that is actually a lose condition. I kind of can't really afford to play the other sentry. That would be so fucking troll, man. Doesn't Dur run Ruination? I would in this meta, yeah. I, I I would never run Shadow Isles without a Ruination in this current meta. Absolutely. I think I should probably Glimpse now. But if I attack, I can bait the Vile Feast first. You're running SI without Ruination right now? Okay, that's a very good point. That's true. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know, we'll just attack in. This is fine. We don't need Swain, we've got Collector. Whee! So it's gotta be Endure. He drew an Endure and he wanted to play it after combat to greet its stats. There is one awkwardness with Endure, which is if his hand is very literally Endure Atrocity, then it, I actually might lose. Because he can Endure, and then threaten the open attack, and then I have to Glimpse, and then he can Atrocity to counter the Glimpse. Because Glimpse kills him, of course, right? So if, if, if we were dealing with an Endure Atrocity, we, we could actually be looking at, you know, some kind of losable game there. Which would have been really funny. You can stun, though. No, I can't. Because he would play Endure right now after combat, and he would open attack with it. Like, we we could actually lose to that exact, very specific two-card top deck. But here's the thing, though, that you really have to understand. And this is, like, super, super important when you're thinking about hand reads and hand ranges. Which is, like, if his cards were sitting in his hand the entire game, we should be scared of that. We should be like, oh god, it could actually be Endure Atrocity, and we could lose to that. I have to- I can't stress this enough, I really have to get this through. Because his two cards were literal just top decks, the odds of that being those two specific cards are literally like 20 times lower. Like 30 times lower. It's like, it shouldn't even really enter our mind. 
Like, if it, it, if it is endure atrocity, and he just ass pulled them off the top, then you just you just lose to that, and that's fine. That's just fine. But because it's like too, you know, in a situation where he did have those cards the entire time, we might have to play around it.